Hey guys, this is Miss Crosby. I want to show you what's going on in my art room this week. Um, right now we are making some sculptures. This is one that I'm working on as kind of an example, my version of the project. And it's the paint is still wet, as you can see. I'm getting it all over the table. But this is a pantyhose or stocking, whichever you want to call it, nylon, um, stretched over some coat wires that have been poked into a scrap piece of wood. Um, with some little holes drilled into it so that's what I've got started on that and this is a ceramic box that we're making in uh, ceramics class and I've taken and painted it with some of the same colors that I'm using that I'm liking right now on the acrylic paint and I use some stamping and some texture and stuff like that um, if I step out here onto the patio we have been learning about Vincent Van Gogh and impressionist and Stuff like that. These are the examples of my students' work. Took something in the door so I don't get locked out. Um, this is my student work right here uh, that we're working on right now, and we're not all finished. This is one that she hasn't actually stretched the pantyhose over yet, so you can kind of see the skeleton of it, the armature, if you will. Um, and she's got the wire on here, and she's got her little stocking, and she's fixing to stretch it out, and then start moving it and shaping it, and putting some paint on it but this gives you an idea of the different kinds of shapes and things that you can make you can paint it any way you want to um, spray paint is optional uh, we might do some spray paint but we're kind of talking about some different things to do this one's kind of patriotic uh, theme that's going on here and this one is the white and black you can see there's a little run right down here on the bottom of the pantyhose, but that's okay. When you paint over it, it kind of seals it, if you will, and it's not a big deal. Um, and there's some scraps of wood in a box that I have for the kids to start with. And then we just bring in our coat hangers and we start stretching the wire out and making it whatever shape we want it to be. Oh, in fact, the wind has gotten a hold of one of them. Let's get back up here. There we go. All right. This one in the black and white, this is the one Caitlin's doing. I think we're going to have to stretch it a little bit this way so that it doesn't keep tipping over. Now, one thing I found, um, I had some recommendations about adding a little bit of glue to the paint. kind of makes your project a little stiffer and more, I don't know, sturdy. It kind of fills in the holes on the pantyhose a little bit better and makes them not, they're not so sheer and they're a little more, I guess you could say, um, solid looking. Even though in reality, they're very lightweight, actually, and they catch the wind pretty well out here on the patio. Um, this is one that one of my better students is doing. Her name is Scout, and you can kind of see by the play of the shadows and stuff like that on it, it's really looking good. Um, and she's just kept putting white on here to kind of get the, the form of it to show up really, really well. And she's going to start adding some of the colors to it and stuff tomorrow. So... That's some of what we've got going on out here, and I'm hoping maybe next week we can either, or next semester we can start doing some sculptures with those blocks, maybe some stained glass windows or something with these windows that I have out here. So that's what we have going on out here in the patio of the art room and in my comprehensive class. And if I step inside the classroom here, this is my classroom up here at the high school. This is my fish tank with all my guppies. Say hello to the guppies. Okay, and as we walk through the room, and hopefully I won't make anyone want to barf or anything like that, um, this is an example that Scout brought in. Her dad actually did this one. I thought it was really cool. Kind of like the metallic sheen it's got on it. And I may look and see if I can find some spray paints that might give us some of that effect. It's really cool looking. Um, and Scout also did some really nice ones. So I'm going to step into the kiln room. If anybody knows what the name of this little gadget is, I say gadget, it's, it's an older kiln. This is a bracket. This is the bracket here that holds the pyrometric cone in place. And this part here actually lifts up and the pyrometric cone rests here. This little piece here got broken off when we were unloading the kiln the other day. There's the piece of it right down there, the little metal piece. Okay, and I need to figure out what it's called so I can replace it. This kiln has seen better days, obviously, but it, to me, fires better and I can control it more easily than any than the other kiln that I have, even though 
bless its little heart, it has been through what looks like a war. I think this is the same kiln that we fired on when I was in school back in the 90s, if that gives you an idea. Um, but these are the pyrometric cones that go in the kiln in those little brackets, and they're placed there, and they're held until they melt at a temperature, depending on what cone it is. It's a little piece of glaze, and this melts at the given temperature and automatically shuts off the kiln. So I need to replace that little bracket, and I found the book on the electric kiln, and I don't like the way it fires. It's melting my clay. I think my clay is a little too low temperature for it. So my electric kiln, my Bartlett, I'm not loving quite so much as I love my my old workhorse here. Um, and maybe it's just a, a user error and I just haven't figured out all the details of how to work it and the intricacies and I'm still working on it. But if anybody has any tips on how to run this, it's an Olymp Olympic electric kiln. It's called a Bartlett and you can see the control panel there. It's very complex and you've got to put all these numbers in and doohickeys and whatnot. And it's kind of intense figuring out how to work it and all the buttons to push. It's worse than the microwave at home and figuring out how to set the clock and program your coffee maker and junk. Okay, but this whole workhorse here, this type of energy saver.